What's going on people, it's TRB, and today's video is not going to be a normal trucking video. Today's video is going to be talking about the disease or the illness that I have or have to live with for the rest of my life. Um, I was doing some uh, YouTube about it after telling uh, Loshan about it because when I say I was on my deathbed, a lot of people don't understand it. I was literally on my deathbed. Um, the, the disease that I had have or is called valley fever, okay? Now you say, what is Valley Fever? Valley Fever or the medical, the short-term medical name is Coxy. Uh, you can YouTube it, what Valley Fever is. Basically what happens is I was working out in Arizona and there, uh, you know, it's, it's mainly you catch it in, for me in the desert. And all you gotta do is breathe. Once you breathe, uh, you can breathe it in, especially if it rain, if it's raining or after it rains, if the soil is disturbed, then there's a great chance that you have, um, that you're going to catch it. It's a absolutely debilitating disease in the beginning. Okay. <clears throat> it kills everything. <laughs> and when I say everything, I mean everything, dogs, cats, birds, humans, it does not discriminate. I don't know if it killed cockroaches cause they kind of resilient. Yeah. I am a truck driver. Y'all don't look at my bed. It ain't made, but <clears throat> I wanted to give my experience that I remember from it because there's a lot that I don't remember. So I'm gonna name this part one. Uh, I am a survivor of Valley Fever. I will have it for the rest of my life. I will have a persistent cough for the rest of my life. Um, but it's it's an absolutely devastating disease and, and make it even worse is a guy I went to high school with. I went in the hospital, he went in the hospital. Uh, his dad actually had it and his dad died from it. I survived, but I went in at 400 pounds and in two months or less, I was 190 something pounds in two months or less. Um, it started off with a cough, fever. I was very weak. Like even though I'm, I'm 6'4", 400 pounds, and I'm a very agile individual for my size and height. Very cheerful, very happy. Uh, but this disease, it, it made me weak. Like for some reason, I. I was super, I was, I'm always, I've always been a strong person, physically strong, uh, but I was just, I was weak. There's nothing I could do. Um, so eventually I went, I went to the hospital in Arizona, went to the hospital in Arizona. They gave me some steroids, gave me steroids, perked me up for a little bit, but then I was still just weak. So I went back to a hospital in Arizona, still weak. So, uh, when I went back home to San Diego, I went back to the hospital cause I was just weak and, um, it wasn't like me, like energy gone physical strength gone and, and persistent cough there was other things going on so i'm gonna have this like i said part one i'm gonna have my uh fiance to do part two so she could tell from her experience because there's a lot of stuff that i do not remember <clears throat> so um went to the hospital and you know for the people that watch this that that is not subscribed to my channel and this is the first time that you're meeting me i'm a very corny goofy playful individual all right and so I'm in the hospital, they admit me. And all I could think about, <laughs> please do not let it be AIDS or HIV. If it's cancer, whatever. I got man boobs, take a, bo take a boobie. It doesn't matter. You know, if it's in my, my testicles, chop them off. But the doctors, they came in, they did a biopsy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my shirt off because I wanna, I wanna see if I can still see the holes. You're not gonna get all of the man boobs, you know what I'm saying? So just bear with me. You'll understand why, why I do this. Okay. You'll understand why I do it in a minute because I do have battle wounds. I'm not going to show you all, but I'm going to show you some. And I have something that is for uh, So let me see if we can still see. Hang on just a minute. I, I, I'm bald. So let me, let me put my hat back on. No, you can't see the, you can't see the, uh, the biopsy. So what they did is they put me under this, um, I look good, ball. Forget y'all. <laughs> they put me under this. Um, they did an MRI. They put me under something else and something else and something else. I can't remember the names of it. Then they did a biopsy on my chest to get a sample of whatever it was. And and they, I was laying in the hospital bed. And what was funny is I got admitted, right? Shout out to the lady that work at Sharp. 
I don't remember her name, but she said, come take a walk with me. So I put my arm around her. So me and her walking up to the roof and she's back there smoking a cigarette because we not knowing what it was at first. So she's over there smoking a cigarette. We just talking. Um, do I know who she was? No, but she was very, very cool. And shout out to all the, the nurse and the staff over at Sharp uh, over in San Diego. So they did the biopsy. Bang. They put the needle in my chest or whatever. Uh, they put this. They put the fluid in me to so they can do some type of x-ray. Uh, I don't know the medical names of it. And again, a lot of stuff is just going off memory. But again, I was I was deadly ill. So I, I don't remember it all. Um, what I do remember is um, the orange. I call it orange juice, the orange stuff. Right. So I'm losing all this weight. My lady's talking about me because my my manly butt cheeks look like <laughs> they just laid like two hands together as I lay on my side or whatever. And I got holes in my stomach. Uh, they also took out my gallbladder. So that's probably where some of those holes are from. Uh, they had a pick line in my arm to run to my heart. No, it was over here because I remember laying on my back. So it was over here, ran to my heart. Um, so they give you this fun. I don't know the medical name. Funz, funzy F. It's, it's a very strong antifungal medication that's orange, okay? That's orange. And I'm going to tell you something. When you take, when and they ain't going to, you got the pick line. So what they do is they come in and they give you the pick line. And basically you have at least 10 minutes before you completely just pass out. And it was like clockwork. Like my lady will be there because I couldn't wash myself. Shout out to my muffin miss. I call her muffin miss. Um, she um, she had to bathe me. I, it, I couldn't even get up to go to the bathroom. I was so weak I couldn't get up to go to the bathroom. Uh, by this time, the medical benefits that I had cut off, I was on Cobra. All right. Uh, she took care of financially. She took care of everything. She was a girlfriend at the time. And she just financially took care of everything, took care of all the paperwork. And uh, I'm, I am indebted to her. Uh, but they give you this orange stuff. And if you watch some of the videos about Valley Fever, you would know what that orange stuff is. And if you ever had Valley Fever and you, you, you got that orange stuff, there's nothing good about the orange stuff. It's great that it helps you because mine didn't spread to my brain or to my bones it, it was contained in my lungs and my immune system was not compromised yay i don't have hiv <laughs> to all the people that do have aids and hiv that's not a shot at y'all um and i would be talking to her and she'd be like yeah baby you know how was your day i was like my day is fine and i it sounds weird that i'm giving all these shout outs but shout out to the filipino staff them ladies that come in at night with the smelly fish stuff you're all right with me. And then for whatever reason, they was like all Filipino. Anyway, they were coming with the orange stuff, hook it up and you will get this because it's going through the pick. And I will never forget that. You will get that cold sensation all the way to your heart. And then it's like something just explode. Blah. And you're just literally like, yeah, boom. And you're gone and you're just shaking and, and, it's a it's a horrible experience. It's a horrible experience, you know. Um, I will always have valley fever. I am a survivor of valley fever. It was definitely ordeal. I have gained all my way back, but the transition, like, I left the hospital. I was between 180 and 190 pounds. Again, I was 400 pounds. Like I'm 400 now. I'm 400 pounds because all the weight came back for whatever reason. Uh, my my set limit is 400 my body wants me to stay there and that's another reason why i think i survived it is because i had so much excess reserve that if i was a skinny person like at my height you're supposed to be 220 well if i was 220 i would have lost like literally like 200 pounds it was 400 yeah i would have lost so much weight that my body wouldn't even been able to function uh, i would have been and everybody who seen me was just it was it was there was this look like What's wrong with them? Because I, I mean, I, I came out like bones. I'm not built to be skinny. So, um, but that orange stuff, when it hits you, you're done. You're done for for hours, and you just wake up and and it's like I and you and the messed up part about it is you know when it's happening. 
it's like you, you, your brain is like, what in the heck is this? And it's just like, no, uh -uh, we're done. Shut down, poop, and you're out. You are out. I had to pull over on the side of the road to stop and make this video because I wanted to just get this out. Because I think it's, it's, it's good to let people know that you can survive. Um, I had this illness in 2000, I want to say 2007, 2008. So it's close to almost two years. They give you something called, um, they give you these pills that you got to take uh, seven times a day for the rest of your life. I haven't took those pills in like three, four years, five years, six years actually. <clears throat> but um, I have, I, I'm a survivor of Coxie. Now, one of the bad things that did come out, come, uh, come out of that, and I'm sharing, I'm, I'm, I'm being vulnerable right now, okay, people? I'm sharing with you my illness. Um, you can get lesions from it, all right? This is going to be gross. I'm just letting you know now. It's going to be gross. Hold on, and I'm going to treat it while I, while I tell y'all about it. Um, for whatever reason, my body, since I still have an affection in my body, it pushes everything out. But however your body's supposed to get rid of infections, it's gonna be gross, all right? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You, you ready for this? I get boils under my arms now. Just under my arms. <laughs> y'all sure y'all ready for this? It's gonna be gross because I haven't cleaned it in about three hours, three, four hours. Boil. Some Boils, boils, see that, see, see that, that's my, what I call my old man illness, once you get over 30, 35, everybody has something weird that's wrong with them, so I keep them clean, take showers every day, Neosporin, because that's the way that my body puts, push out infections, actually, I know it's gross, right? Yeah, I got on deodorant, people. Cause I mean, I got one right there, and it's like it's a, like an open wound. You see that? And y'all like, oh, that's gross. I can't believe he. You know what? It is what it is. And actually, you see these spots right here, and it should be one right here. That's the pick lines. All right. So, would I rather be alive? See all these craters? Those are boils. Would I rather be alive and deal with boils or would I rather be dead? That's the question you got to ask. And uh, I survive. I feel like having, because you can get lesions from valley fever and I feel like Dealing with this is way better than dying, but I have all my energy. Um, I got my weight back. I got my cheerfulness back. I am alive. And even when I was in the, uh, when they walked in, it was me and my lady, and they walked in and was like, well, we we know what you, what you got. I said, please don't let it be AIDS. <laughs> please don't let it be AIDS. And again, to all the people that watch this that might have that, this is not a shot at you. I just know the dirt that I did as a, as a young man, the Russian roulette. Listen, we've all been there, men and women. We've all been there. But um, so yeah, I'm a survivor of Valley Fever. I will have it for the rest of my life. Uh, I will always be nervous when I drive through Arizona. Um, it freaks me out when I do. Being a truck driver, you're gonna drive through it, you know, to get to uh, where we got to get to, especially like Texas and different things like that. But it's just creepy because I know where I got it from. And I had the symptoms. I didn't have the rash. Now, as weird as this might sound, it's probably because I'm black. So I probably did have the rash. I didn't see it because it was covered with all this beautiful melanin. But uh, Valley Fever Coxie is not something to play with. All right. Especially if you've been in lower United States, such as Arizona. Southern California, and you get very weak flu-like symptoms, not even flu-like, pneumonia-like symptoms, all right? Ask them. <clears throat> if they say, oh, you got, your, I don't know how to probably say it, pneumonia is how I pronounce it. If they say you got pneumonia uh, or pneumonia, whatever, 
Have them to do a chest, chest x-ray and make sure you, you don't have valley fever. Valley fever can spread to your brain, your bones. It can cause scarring and lesions. Uh, there's a variety of things that can happen by you uh, getting valley fever. And again, there's nothing you can do uh, not to get it. I mean, if you're not in Arizona or very dry deserts like Southern California, different things like that, then you should be okay. But for the people that are uh, in those areas, a lot of people have built up immunity to it. Well, I didn't because I was coming from the South with all that fresh air, green and all that oxygen. And then I come over here to Arizona and, you know, with all the heat and dust and it literally almost killed me. Um, so yeah, I've literally survived death. Like I was on death doorstep and some people don't believe me when I say that. And I might say it with a smile and joking manner, but it is absolutely for real. Absolutely. I was on death door. Now, some people are going to say, oh, it's the miracle of God. You know, it's Jesus, it's this and that that helped you through. It could be, but who gave it to me? <laughs> was that Satan that gave it to me? For all the people that's going to say, you know, praise the Lord. I do thank God that I'm here to make this video for you to let you know that I'm surviving. I do thank God to have the ability and the charisma and, um, to be able to do my YouTube and, and to have the personality that I have. I do thank God for that. And was this a learning lesson? What's the lesson to learn from it? I mean, not to breathe. <laughs> so why it is a blessing that I am here and I am thankful, you know, I just be messing around. Um, just be wary if you are in those areas, okay? Um, once I got out the hospital and they released me to go home, which was weird because when they released me to go home, I ran into my ex-girlfriend with my girlfriend, <laughs> which my ex-girlfriend is cool. Um, uh, well, shit, not even ex-girlfriend. Um, when I got out the hospital, I felt good. I got in the, um, I got I got in the car out, out of the wheelchair, got in the car, drove to um, drove home and my girl would get frustrated because I couldn't do anything. I couldn't walk to the bathroom. Um, I had to throw up. I tried to eat because your appetite is just gone. I tried to eat, but I would throw up and I would literally be in the bed and I would just throw up on the wall and then too weak to go clean it up. So now she's cleaning up my throw up. Uh, I need help to go take a bath. Uh, I couldn't take a shower. I had to take a bath and, you know, she would wipe me down or whatever. And it's, it's demeaning and it makes you feel vulnerable and weak, pathetic for some people. It makes you feel like, like I couldn't even imagine if I didn't have nobody by my side, how would I have just taken care of myself? You know, um, I was taking the pills seven days and and the pills that they give you is like a pill form i think of that orange stuff fluconazole flu fluconazole or something like that that's the pill that i was taking seven days and when you take the pill you immediately feel tingling around your body and there's something that happens to my chest and something just don't feel right when i when i took it you know uh, but at the end of the day i'm a survivor of it and uh, so for the people that's out there that's going through it, understand that you are not alone. I didn't know anything about Facebook. Well, I don't even think Facebook was out then <coughs> or it wasn't as popular as it is now, but I didn't know nothing about any of these groups to help me through this or to help my lady through this or any support groups or anything like that. We kind of just took the brunt of it on our own and uh, she was there by my side. And that's why I'm deeply in love with that woman. Um, so you are not alone, all right? You're not alone. There's people of all different races and cultures. Like the videos I was watching was just of uh, white people, but there's black people that get it because black people get it more than any other race. Any non-white is at a is uh, more susceptible to valley fever than it, than Caucasian individuals or European individuals or, or white people, however you want to say it. And uh, yeah, I would. She would make me get out the bed and drive her to work. 
I would drive her to work and she lived, she worked about 15, 20 minutes away. I would drive her to work, come back and I would pull into the garage. I would turn the car off and I would sit there for hours because I was too weak to get out the car to walk into the house. Um, it was bad. It was bad. I, I, I can't explain it, but for the people that's going through it, you understand. For the people that where it gets in your bones, it, it can paralyze you. It it spreads like crazy. I'm just lucky enough, like I said, uh, my immune system wasn't compromised. But it can get in your brain, get in your bones. It's already in your lungs, and it, it, it just multiplies like crazy, and your body doesn't know how to handle it, so it shuts down to focus on this. And by your body having a reaction like that, it can ruin your life because your job, your friends, your family, your children, if you have them, um, anything and everything that you want to do, you can't do because you're too weak. Not only that, the, the memory loss is ridiculous. Somebody can tell you up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B. Most people know what that code is. You wouldn't even remember what they was talking about. Complete, just, you, you don't remember. There's conversations that I'm sure that me and my lady had that um, I don't remember. So again, this is part one. I'm sorry I kept you off for 21 minutes. I just wanna, I just wanna get that point across to let you know that it's okay. All right, you will get through this, especially if they give you the orange stuff. You're gonna start Harlem, you're gonna start shaking and everything, and hey, you're gonna lose a lot of weight. If you got somebody by your side, keep your spirits high because people, I'm 37 years old. I had this when I was about 28, 29. I'm gonna say probably when I was like 29, 30. And seven years later, I'm just as healthy as an ox. All right, I go by the name TRB. All right, you can feel free to add me on my Facebook. I am TRB. Uh, if you want to reach out about it, uh, I'm pretty sure there's a variety of different social media groups out there for it uh, to give you more information about it, or if you just want somebody to understand your plight. There's help out there now. When I had it, <laughs> social media wasn't that big. So, other than that, people. Hope you enjoyed my video. This is just part one. I'm gonna have my lady come come through and tell more of the stories because I, you know, the stuff that I just told you was only 10% of, <laughs> of everything that happened because you're going to have memory loss. When they hit you with the orange stuff, whew, when you drink that, o, that, that OJ, when that OJ go in your veins. Also, side note, be cautious because I got addicted to, uh, uh, it's not methamphetamines. It's a pain reliever that they're gonna give you because you're bone, you're gonna be in pain, you're gonna feel like arthritis, your joints are gonna hurt. That's one of the reasons why I went to the hospital because my joints, my hips were hurting real bad. Like I couldn't get that stretch that I needed and it was it's ridiculous. So I'm just have her to come on and give you guys a better explanation of what happened with me. Um, other than that, as always, thank you for stopping by. Feel free to like, subscribe, and share. Uh, if you are, Somebody that knows somebody need employment. Hey, I'm a truck driver. There's 600 videos of truck driving randomness. All right. It's not as clean as this video, but I definitely get the point across. All right. I thank you for listening to my story. Peace.